I wouldn't say this has been a long-awaited video for me because if you asked me like a year ago if I would have done this absolutely not I feel like I've grown a lot in the past year which I feel like a lot of people say about like their first year of college and every year in college but just also every year as far back as I can remember I've never solely been attracted to or interested in just one gender over the other if we're sticking strictly to the traditional binary of like boys and girls even though there's way more to that but the point of this video is even though it was something that I thought about at a very young age it was something that because of my environment because of the people I grew up with the family I was raised in just like a bunch of factors like anyone's coming out story I'm sure there are just a bunch of reasons why I completely like suppressed that part of my identity, just put it away, didn't think about it. And it was also easy for me to not think so much about it, um, even in like my earlier high school years because I wasn't thinking about any anyone romantically. You can see from my old YouTube videos, I um, was struggling a lot with self-love and was deeply insecure and my mind just wasn't even there. It was towards like, I think it was like my junior year of high school that I wrote a paper on my identity. It was for a Perspectives on Diversity class. I wrote a paper on my identity both as a biracial woman and a bisexual woman. And that was like the first time I like openly put that label and I knew my friends wanted to read that paper, my really close friends that I've grown up with since I was like five. Um, I knew my teacher would read that paper, but um, no one no one really knew. There, I had one friend, Ryan, who I told on my 17th birthday in my pantry. I was having like a little birthday party with friends and he was technically the first person I came out to. I never really labeled myself as curious because of the fact that this is something that I always felt and it was a part of me since like I was a child and could form those feelings. But if I did call myself curious, it was because I felt too inexperienced, too unsure. I didn't want to disrespect anyone who claimed that label and I wasn't quote unquote certain if I was bisexual like it was just like you know labels they're frightening and um, I think I just increasingly learned that it is such a spectrum and um, your experience is uniquely your own and I, think I also learned in college that you shouldn't look towards someone else's journey and it's good to draw inspiration from that but you shouldn't criticize yourself or force yourself to be in a place where other people have reached if you're not ready. I feel like there aren't enough bi narratives out there. I strongly believe that bi women and especially bi men are not taken seriously in their identity. I went to a very, I would say conservative Catholic school um, from kindergarten until eighth grade. So, and it was very, very small, it was a private Catholic school, so there were like 20, no that's a lie, 36 people in my class. But it was not like Catholicism forced down your throat, but it was very present, religion class, prayer, mass. I don't know if I necessarily identify, I, I don't, I don't consider myself Catholic. My mom and dad are both Catholic. Um, my mom's Filipino, my dad's Lebanese. Um, they both immigrated like at different times. Uh, my dad lived in Montreal, Canada. I don't know why I'm giving this, I'm giving this background, just so you understand. Uh, but their parents, you know, would take them to mass or church. Um, but my, my own parents, you know, they moved here. I think part of it was not trying to assimilate, but like focus on work and raising their children. And so we weren't that family that went to church every Sunday. So like sending me to Catholic school wasn't about me like establishing my Catholic faith or anything, but it was also 
close to home and a, and a good school and um, yeah, they just sent me there. And some of my long life friends I found on that first day of kindergarten. So uh, while I do have a lot of amazing memories, like just like happy childhood memories there, looking back, especially when I was thinking about my journey in like high school and coming more to terms with my sexuality made me really reflect on my experiences in kindergarten through eighth grade. And so it was just the typical, you know, like there's this path to salvation and that's marriage between a man and woman and we never had sex ed. I, like when that kind of conversation started around fourth and fifth grade, gather in a circle and read this book about like God's love for us and it's like the typical abstinence and not like sex education like there was none of that and it was just very clear like there was this path to salvation and then it was right and wrong and so it was just very conflicting because in my head and in my heart that was not what I believed was necessarily right and so I was having this internal battle with my sexual identity but also like my religion like I was born I was baptized I like had communion and I like did reconciliation and like everyone around me went to like mass regularly and were more like I would say more practicing Catholics and so it was a very heavy presence and so for the longest time I just kind of pushed it away I like the first person I kissed was probably a girl like I kissed a girl when I was like five I kissed a girl when I was in third grade and it was like me initiating that experience and when I was younger I didn't think much of it but as I got older I was just like convinced more and more that I guess life would just be easier if I just didn't focus on that part of my identity and just convince myself that I was straight and then in middle school it was just like little things that I would notice and I was very vocal too at a young age about like support for the LGBT community and I was always met with not so much resistance but like people would be like well you're a lesbian like you must be a lesbian if you're so like in support of this and I'd be like no that doesn't mean anything like I would like push against that and I also had a friend in um, elementary middle school I was really close to and we did everything together and people just like started talking and like I'm sure like people won't even remember this but that's all coming from people who I identify as like heterosexual which is their identity but it's in a way like a privilege in that they they could just dispense these words and these opinions that like now even though they've grown and they've changed and their opinions on things like the LGBT community is way more progressive, it wasn't always. I bring up that friend because people would just like murmur and whisper and talk about, oh, like she's in love with Maya, like she she's just like gay and she's lesbian. And like the way it was said was just, there was such like negative connotations. So judgmental and you know, at the time being openly gay or bi or what have you was not normal, especially just in my environment it wasn't. Um, and like YouTubers who were out and openly proud like Tyler Oakley, like they would talk about not watching them because like their faith and their parents and family and just like everything that they grew up knowing told them that that identity was against God and <laughs> like a sin, like literally. So fast forward to high school, I go to a high school in Berkeley, still a Catholic private school, but way more, I would say, compared to my lower, like elementary middle school experience, way more progressive and like there were just so many people from so many backgrounds that concern like their racial ethnic identity or the economic class or background that they come from where they live and like a big population wasn't even catholic suddenly like i'm in this environment where people can be or feel that they can be very open and with their identity and it was so amazing and refreshing but at the same time, 
you s I still felt like this oppressive, judgmental force just in a different way. And now so it was like accepted, but it was also fetishized and romanticized. Like just all the wrong things were being romanticized and like like mental illness as well, which is something I also struggled with greatly in high school and still now and like all my life. So high school was still a really difficult time and what was hardest for me was just how depressed I was because of like this like self-loathing I had and I used to think I guess it was just about like my like surface like looks like I didn't I was just very insecure I didn't like the way I looked at all I hated looking at myself in a mirror but I think now that I'm realizing it's it's just like it was also years of like built up like conflicting identities and like this want to be comfortable in myself and just in every way I wasn't. And the reason in high school I still felt uneasy and I still pushed that back was because there were girls who were coming out and I know people who look back at our high school and they're like, oh yeah, we were so accepting. Um, but when girls, there were a couple of girls who were coming out as bi and like girls coming out as gay and for the girls who were bi, people were saying mean things, but <laughs> people don't realize it's mean. It's just like, oh, like she just wants it for attention. She's not seriously bi. And then I just started noticing kind of like the stereotypes and, and, and like the stigmas that are met with like women who identify as bi and it's just like well how would you know if you've never been with a girl like how would you know if you've never dated a girl and these are all questions that you would never ever ask a straight person we just have to like get out of this mindset that like straight like heterosexuality is the norm like it's there's that's why there's the word heteronormativity look it up if you have never heard of it before but like what we're conditioned to view as normal and we're conditioned to view some like sexuality as this baseline of you you are straight and that's just so completely narrow-minded and just wrong <laughs> then people would just be like ah but isn't it like just a phase don't you like pick one person or the other like aren't you gonna marry a guy like I just see you marrying a guy and then like in that sense they're implying that I'm just straight and it's like no invalidating and frustrating most of the time you just like if you're met with that kind of like ignorance you don't even want to explain yourself and I think that's also why people for so long might conceal that identity because I understand that we all grow up in very different environments and we're raised to believe different things but this is also why I wanted to make this video is to like put more narratives out there and if people want to learn and want to understand that it's there but I was just told by people who didn't know that I identified that way that bisexuality isn't real I literally was told that I was told that girls are doing it a lot now because it's hip and like they want the attention and I'm like okay well that's not me but now now I'm not gonna speak up and I wasn't ready I wasn't ready because I never grew up exploring that part of my sexuality and suddenly I was thinking about it and I didn't know what to think I didn't know what I would say to people but why is it that I needed to explain myself you know like why is it that I need to defend myself and how I identify and I think that's what I started to realize later in high school and for sure in college. I feel like ever since I've slowly come out and talked about it more and, th and reflected more on my identity and been more open to that, I've grown so much and I've grown so much more comfortable in my skin in ways I didn't know was possible. And the support I felt was really amazing and even the confusion I was met with sometimes by family was at times maybe a little frustrating but understandable but 
you know, like I came out to my mom and it was a really positive experience. She had her questions and I understand that and you know, in time, over a few days, she thought about it too and before I left, she let me know that she supports me and loves me and at the end of the day just wants me to be happy and that was that was like really freeing I think like I think like the word I would use a lot is just freeing um, and I've had girls talk to me and ask me like I feel like you're doing it right you're so open I've, I've had a girl tell me that she feels like she's on the wrong path and I'm just like take the path that you are comfortable with open yourself up but at whatever pace you need with whoever you feel most comfortable to open up with and at the end of the day like don't compare your journey to someone else's and think that you're doing it wrong I am just much happier and more secure and I don't need any more because I used to and I didn't realize this but like a your other people's validation. I, I don't need your validation of my identity. It's a lot. It's really exciting, um, but it's a whole new world to navigate. And I currently am just trying to become even in a different way secure in that identity. And I just need to keep telling myself, you know, I'm not delayed, <laughs> like there are so many people in this community who are going through the same thing or substantially have gone through worse and I, my heart is like there for everyone who has felt in any way discriminated against or judged or belittled or misjudged or placed into categories they didn't want to be placed and you owe it to no one to explain who you are or to explain your identity when you're when you are ready on your own terms you should be able to deliver that story and I kind of slowly did that I you know it's I told one of my closest friends and then I wrote a paper and my teacher read it and my other closest friends found out and then my first year of college I like came out on my finsta and my sister and my cousins who are like my sisters and other close friends. It's been years and years and years that I've been on this journey and it will never stop. Any part of your identity is constantly evolving, growing. The main thing I really loved about YouTube when I did it in high school was the community and the people I got to quote unquote meet, but the people's stories I got to hear and share and the people who felt like I was there for them, but really they were really there for me. And so I'm just going to continue that energy with this channel. So that is all. I hope you enjoyed. I love you all. Thank you for watching if you watched it through. I don't know how long this is going to be. I ramble. Um, but thank you so much. And... I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm in this place where doing this is possible. But, heck yeah, bro. Love and positivity. How do people sign off? They're like, like, comment, or like, leave a comment down below, subscribe, press this button, press that button. Do whatever you want. Add me on socials. I don't really use Snapchat. Don't ask me for my Snapchat. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and you can email me. I'll put it down below. Love you, and until next time, I think I need an outro. Um, like a, like a little, and until next time, da-da-da-da-da.